Welcome back. We still have the project coordinator, Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, Dr. Marvin Dekiel, here talking about the Ogoni land cleanup. Dr. Dekiel, uh, before we went on break, I said I asked for your permission to talk like a layman. You're talking commercial, you're talking procurement. The man in Ogoni land and his brothers who are outside, and indeed the rest of the Who can't fish anymore? Who can't fish anymore? <laughs> who can't even come back home? He's not interested in commercial bidding, technical bidding, no. What he wants to know is what's going on on ground How far? Now. Is right. How what's, far? Where, How far? Where, where we are on ground right now is that we have our team of scientists that I'm speaking to you in the site doing scoping and delineation. That is an exercise that we need to do to define the contamination boundaries on each of these sites. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to do that? We need to do that because we need to get up-to-date information site-specific so that we could do, use that to do what it is they're asking for. Remediation is a process. It's not just one activity. And for you to get to the point where that cleanup which you're asking for will be seen is that you need to go through what UNEP did. You do the assessment, which is asking the question. The assessment answers the question, is this place polluted or not? Answer is yes. The next one is stage two, how Polluted is this place. Tell me, uh, hold on. Like when you talk about how polluted is this place, Korokoro 3, uh, Korokoro well 3, uh, so it was particularly successful where you, do, where you did a techn technology trials and selected sites as at the end of 2017. So, but Korokoro 3, well 3 was particularly successful. What happened there? Well, we, we, like I said, what we did was a demonstration thing and the actual work is what we are doing now, which is having people in the field to do the delineation, to do the scoping, and okay. the information we let's get... Go back, let's step back a bit. Okay. What you did, in when you... And let me read it here, the way it is, the way I put it down here. It says, by the end of 2017, Hyperp had completed nine technology trials in selected UNEP recorded sites, and one at Korokoro Well 3 was particularly successful. It, it, Tell us about that Korokoro Well 3. The, the key thing about all the technology work we did was that before we send a company to any site, we took baseline information for the parameters TPH, PAH, and the heavy metals. So when we're sending a company to the site, we already know the level of contamination at that site. Then when we assign a company to the site, we tell you test your technology within X period of time, within 30 days, within 60 days, and during that period, we periodically go back there to take samples, to now look at, to monitor those parameters. So, for example, if the TPH value at a site was 10,000 at the beginning, and in two months, we came back, it's now 5,000. We know that within one month, you have reduced it by 5,000. Mm -hmm. If by the third month, it's now 2,005, you now know that within this period, you've done that. At the end of that period, we could tell whether that technology was effective. That's what that information is telling you. So it was particularly successful because whatever technology that company deployed was able to degrade, was able to reduce the contaminant parameter which we monitored which is, substantially what during is it that called? period. Is it the free phase oil? Uh, the free phase oil is the initial thing you do what you before year. There are different levels from the free phase to when you now go to specific parameters to the heavy metals to the poly aromatic hydrocarbons to the total petroleum hydrocarbons. These are all parameters combined we do. But oh. I think that is, we'll leave that for the technical session. <laughs> but, but, you know, but, yeah, but, know. but what happened was. The layman doesn't want to know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we, don't, we, we don't want to go too technical. But the key thing is this. Every technology that we, we, we wanted to use that was tested during that period was one that was able to tell us whether or not TPH value were reduced. That's contamination. So I'm going back to the phases of remediation as a process, hmm. okay, which was you do the initial assessment, do the second level of assessment to define that site in terms of the quantum of contamination in the site. And then you now come out with the best method to remove that quantum of contamination because you're going to find different contaminants and there will be the best way to remove them. Most time you have to combine different methods, mm -hmm. biological, chemical, thermal, physical, chemical, together to okay. get those contaminants So what we are expecting in Ogonilan at the end of the day is after removing the contaminant is to more like help the 
earth to regain exactly. it. I, I was still, I'm still on the process. So you do the initial assessment, you do the scoping, you do the remediation, and what you're talking about is another phase called restoration. Restoration is that process that is going to put the site almost at to its original state before impact. Okay. So, and that is what UNEP says, it might take 25 to 30 years. Of course, removing the contaminant, is, with the first five days we could deal with that. But putting back the vegetation, yeah. putting back the ecology, yeah. putting back all of those things that were there, the nature that was there, mm. is going to take that time. To, for example, mangrove takes, takes so long yeah. To, yeah. To, to regenerate. Mm. Okay. And so, to, so that is what this report mm. is explaining. So, sorry, I keep going back to the money. The money part of it. <laughs> um, how much are the IOCs contributing to this? Because they're the ones who cost all this in the first place. Well, the IOCs are the, the, the IOCs as a JV. They are providing all the money that we need, and that is uh, with the government, of course, uh, because NMPC, which is the government, is part of the IOCs. So the money is provided by the IOCs, and that's why they're represented at the governing council, mm -hmm. at the board of trustees. And so decisions about this project is decided not only by government, mm -hmm. but by the IOCs, by the communities, by civil society, all of us together make decisions as for this project. And this project has profound impact on all the stakeholders. So you are like the errand boy. I am there to implement uh, <laughs> the, the, all the decisions taken at the level of the governing council and um, to make sure that the day-to-day -day activity of the project is implemented to the letter, which is a commitment of the government to the people. Okay, so there, there are people who are listening here and one of them is asking, he says, I'm not sure what you're talking about. He says, it took BP a little time to clean up the oil spill in the ocean in Mexico in 2010. Why is this one taking so long? Yeah. Well, um, if, you, if you want to talk about uh, the, the history of the pollution in Ogoniland, it's way different from what happened in, in, in America. Yeah. We're talking about four decades of contamination. Pollution. And you're talking about an incident that was a one-off and there was some yeah. response. And, yeah. and so we are doing this thing for the first time. And we're also dealing with a completely different scenario in terms of doing more of remediation work. And they did more of, of recovery and clean up exercises. Of course, remediation work in that place you go to, now you find out that remediation work is still going on even in that place. Because it is a continual process that will continue to, go, to, to happen. The, 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 the vegetation, the soil texture, texture, uh, all the activities, the birds, the things that were in that place at the time of impact, up to now I can tell you that they have not gone back to what it was at the original state. Because that's how long it takes for restoration uh, to, 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 to be completed. Okay, so um, let's look at the extent of progress of work done. Um, from what I have here, in, 19, in 2017 about 92 sites were remediated and certified. Is that correct? Well, uh, we are in the process of selecting the best companies, and we are about to just send the best set of best, best companies into this field to, for work. So what we have done previously has been demonstration work, which is different from the actual work, which is where we just said to now. Uh, uh, demonstration work means they didn't do anything? Demonstration work was more like testing. Do, like I said, we just got companies to do bit and bit of tests for their technology. But for us to award a job, we need to go through the government procurement process, which is what I was telling you, that allows us to select the best companies. How long does it take it to takes, go it's for procurement to so get it, You know, we, this is an office that started only in May last year. So yeah. we're talking about just over a year. And we're things. talking about the people whose lives have been... What stagnated for, for over four decades? Exactly. We, we are talking about so four decades. How much we, of we are talking about four decades of activities and a government that only came and started what was... Uh, not there. Dr. So we just started a process that has never been done anywhere in this country before. Is it possible to reduce the red tape so that things there can There are no get red gold? tapes. What we Fast needed to track. do... No, let me explain again. For a project of this magnitude, you need a lot of planning. And you need to get it done plan the professional way. You need to get the technical data from the site. This is the data that you use to design that process. Now, what have we been doing not exactly right? It's that all of these processes, when there is a spear, we've ignored them. We thought the first thing to do was to move the bulldozer to site and we start work. When you go to a site and start any work without understanding the, the geology of that site, without taking specific information as the nature of the contaminant and the best way to get it out through this detailed study, you fail. 
And so there's no point rushing in. I want to quote my Minister of State for Environment. He says we are not uh, uh, in a hurry to fail. Um, uh, who's, 